All right, so in the last video, I showed you how to create a macOS Monterey virtual machine inside of UTM. However, I promised at the end of the video, we would look at some performance and test out some things within this virtual machine. Um, and then I can give a final verdict of if creating a macOS Monterey VM in UTM is worth it. Um, or are the other methods better? Um, and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Um, so I know it's been a while since the previous video. Um, however, I hope this is valuable for you so we can test some things out um, in this virtual machine. Um, now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I did not script this video. This is completely impromptu. Uh, now I have done you know previous takes of this, so I kind of know what we are going to test here. Um, but th the reason why I didn't write a script for this is because I want to show you exactly what happens with this virtual machine. Like if there are any problems, I will show you the problems, so I don't have to edit anything out. You know, unless it's you know, something that takes a very long time to fix. Um, but there we go. So let's go ahead and boot this up. And we can see um, that it will boot up very, very fast once the Apple logo comes up. There we go. So it's like five seconds. So that is extraordinarily fast boot time. And the login is also pretty quick here. So there we go. Now, the one thing that you might notice already is I don't have this VM in full screen. So let's see what happens when we put it in full screen. I'm working on a 1080p monitor. So this monitor that I've got is 1920 by 1080. We can see we've got these black bars. What the heck is that? That means this VM is running at a different resolution. So let's look at displays and go to scaled. We can see we're running at 1920 by 1200 now. You might be familiar with that resolution. That is the same resolution as the 17-inch MacBook Pro from 2009 through 2011. So there we go. So we're working kind of off of that resolution there, which is also the resolution of some projectors too. So if you've got a projector, you know, you're familiar with this. So if we option click scaled, which is what you would do to get more options, we don't have any more options. So it's a bit unfortunate. Um, and so the Xcode project um, that we, uh, you know, you were able to build yourself um, that I mentioned in the last video has more resolutions available. In fact, you can go all the way up to 4K resolution um, in, in the VM, uh, which is actually weird because it's like more than the actual monitor itself. So there we go. Um, so if you've got a 4K monitor, use the Xcode project because this obviously isn't really that, you know, it's kind of weird, you know, to have it either in full screen or not full screen. So we'll just leave it out of full screen for now. Um, so there we go. That's just something I wanted to mention right off the bat. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some other things here. So I've got OBS installed. So this is kind of the, the one out of the three things we're going to test um, today. Um, and I've set this up from a previous take. Now we can see is really, really choppy. That is probably the worst OBS performance I have seen on a Mac. Um, so it is not good. And we are running OBS on our host machine too, so that could be a thing. Um, so it's not good. We are getting like not even one frame per second. So, and, and when we try to close it, it does hang. So OBS, no. Do not use OBS if you have this in a virtual machine. So that gets me to Activity Monitor. So let's compare Activity Monitor on the VM to Activity Monitor on our real Mac. So let's take a look at Activity Monitor and open our CPU and GPU windows. We can see we've got only four cores detected. Um, now let's go up to about this Mac and we can see we are actually virtualizing the M1 chip. That's kind of obvious because we have GPU acceleration and all that. So this is our CPU. Now, let's close this out so we can see and compare. This is activity monitor on our real Mac on my host machine here. So 
we can see that we've got eight cores. VM only has four. Um, and it, that is the default setting. So I think what it is doing is using efficiency cores rather than performance cores. Um, and if you were to allot all eight cores, that's obviously not recommended. Now, since it's an Apple Silicon Mac and if we got a, a Monterey VM, super efficient. So you could allot eight cores and it would still work because that's how the Xcode project works. The Xcode project that you build, when you start at the VM, you go into Activity Monitor on the VM, you've got eight cores to access. So, and that's just on the M1. So like if you have the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, that has 20 cores, 16 performance and four efficiency cores. So therefore, in this UTM system, you would have access to 16 cores by default. So there we go. That is what we've got here. Um, now, I don't have an M1 Ultra, so I can't verify that. It could be that, you know, you've got four cores allotted. But just by what we've seen here, it's only using the, the performance cores. Um, so that is how I came to that conclusion. So... Let's take a look at QuickTime Player. And um, actually, we don't need to do that. We can just do this and make a screen recording real quick and just do some things like drag a window around to, you know, sure, true 60 frames per second. And the nice thing is this Mac is, the real Mac is uh, recording at 60 frames per second. So we've got 60 on both ends here. And let's play this video. Looks like we got 60 frames per second. So in QuickTime, we do get 60. Now it looks like the resolution is really bad. Um, so yeah, that obviously isn't good. Now I haven't set up any shared directory, so we can't like put it on the real Mac or anything. But I, I could do that, but I don't really think it's important. Now the one thing that I did notice in this VM is you can get direct audio. So let's, yeah, like you get, you've got the sound effects and all that. So like that, I heard through my speakers. MP trash. That's through my speakers. So it is going right through. Now let's look at system references and go into sound. We can see that it's using this virtual sound device here. And we can see that there. And that is um, what that is using to emulate the sound. Um, now, unfortunately, I don't have any like test audio that I could... I could get up, um, but um, that is nice. You know, you could get full audio there. So there we go. Now, this virtual machine um, is, like I said, uh, we've, we also have 8 gigabytes of RAM. So let's take a look here at Activity Monitor with 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's actually being very efficient with the RAM, which is nice. Energy now. I doubt we will be able to see battery stuff because yeah, because it's a virtual machine. And VMs don't have batteries. So um, now the other thing is you cannot get into recovery. I don't think there is a way that I've uh, that I've noticed so far to get into recovery on this VM. Um, so that has been unfortunate. Um, this is just purely through DFU, and so if this kind of messes up, you really won't be able to get into recovery. But what's the point? You know, there's really no point in getting into recovery in a VM. Like, what could really go wrong that you would need to do that, especially in a virtual machine? So, that's a little bit unfortunate. Now, the other thing that you might notice is this Wi-Fi. If we try to turn it on, it doesn't do anything. Web browsing actually works fine. So, let's go to System Preferences, go to Network. We can see we've got an Ethernet. So if we try to go to, I don't know, like 9 to 5 Mac or something, we can see it's a little slow, but it will load eventually. And then we will, you know, scroll through 9 to 5 Mac and it works fine. You know, we can do all of this. The scrolling, actually really, really beautiful scrolling there. So, yeah, websites load fine. Um, so that is nice. Now, as far as if you should uh, you know, if I would recommend using UTM over other programs, I would have to say the custom Xcode project is the best way to go um, for a number of reasons. Um, so 
number one, you've got more display resolutions. Like I said, you can go all the way up to 4K on that. The other thing is you've got access to all eight cores, um, or however many cores you have on your Apple Silicon Mac. Um, now, the other thing is you just have better performance, I think. This is a little slow, um, I have to say, compared to the Xcode project. The Xcode project is actually... Um, a little bit faster. Um, now, what I noticed in the last video when setting up the Mac OS Monterey VM is that the setup assistant actually through this went by much quicker, but when we look at performance and web browsing, the Xcode project is actually faster. So I would recommend the Xcode project more. Now, the other thing, the, the couple of caveats to the Xcode project that you have to be aware of, number one, you have to have Apple Configurator 2, you have to have an IPSW file. They don't provide you with those things. So you've got to download those things and get um, you know, an IPSW file, Apple Configurator 2, and all of that. Um, because in UTM, it'll download an IPSW for you, or you can find one that you already have in your system. You don't need Apple Configurator 2, it'll restore it for you. Um, right inside of UTMs. So that is nice. That's like the really one thing. Now, I guess the other thing that's nice about this UTM is that you get sound. Because in Xcode, the project, you you know, you don't really get sound from what I've noticed. Now, there is probably a way to get sound, uh, but I, have, I haven't really tried. Um, so th there are videos on creating the Mac, Mac OS Monterey VM with the Xcode project. Um, that are already out there that are much, you know, better and cover more things than what I could do. Um, but, you know, if you are interested in that, so, you know, check out the Xcode project. It is free to download. Um, now, the other thing is Parallels. I haven't actually tested Parallels in a VM since, like, it's been almost, like, seven or eight months by this point. Um, and... So I don't, it's probably gotten much faster, but from what I remember, it was pretty slow um, and didn't work too well. Um, but that was also in Mac OS Monterey, it was in a beta, so that is also, could be why I actually went as far as to install Mac OS Monterey beta on this machine just to test parallels. <laughs> um, so uh, was it worth it? Probably not. Um, but there we go. So Parallels probably gotten faster by this point. Maybe you should just use Parallels. Obviously, it's a paid subscription, so you do have to pay money for it. I think it's like $75. So it's not terrible. And you also get Windows and all that stuff you can do. Uh, or Windows 10, Windows 11. So it, it is nice, which you can also do in a UTM. So it's it's... It's kind of a tricky situation because if, you know, Parallels is obviously much easier to use. Um, but... You know, it uses their own proprietary stuff. This actually is using the QEMU as a backend. So you can have QEMU, the actual thing, and not even use UTM. You can just plop this image into QEMU and it would work. Uh, but I don't have that installed on this machine, uh, so I can't really test that. Now, so I've been talking for a while about, you know, should you use it? I don't. I don't know. Um, you should test it out for yourself. Um, like I said, the Xcode project is probably just a better idea. So there we go. I hope this video was helpful, and I know it was kind of, kind of boring, probably. It's not the most interesting thing to watch someone test things out. Uh, but I hope this was, um, this was sort of helpful, um, at least. So thank you for watching, um, and... Uh, I'll, I'll try to do a couple of other videos here pretty soon about Mac OS Monterey um, and other virtualization options here. So thanks for watching uh, and have a good night.